you know what really sucks? Is when people don't like you, but they've never met you. That sucks. Guitar Stuff with John! Welcome back to another Guitar Stuff with John. This is going to be an interesting episode, and it's one that I've been th I've thought about for days. Um, and as you can tell by the t from the title of this video, <laughs> uh, first thing I'm going to tell you is that's complete clickbait. Uh, I don't hate Martin guitars. Uh, matter of fact, I love Martin guitars, and I'm to to make a long, very long story short. I can't own a Martin guitar because of two things, price and dependability. And that's my own personal experience with them. So I'm going to tell you what started this. Uh, it's actually quite funny. I had a longtime supporter of the channel send me an email yesterday. And the e he said, you've got the, the online forum on fire. And I didn't know what he meant. So I, I, I clicked the link and I ended up on a uh, an online forum uh, on a platform called uh, Tapatalk, and there were eighty some comments on this thread, and the thread was called J.P. Cormier and Martin Guitars. Right now, mind you, I everyone's entitled to their opinion, and the whole reason I'm doing this channel is is to offer you mine. It's just an opinion, and but it's based on 39 years of touring. Touring the world, not my local area. I've played all over the planet, from here to Afghanistan, to all over Europe, all over the United States, every province and place in Canada. And the reason I talk about these things is because I love guitar players. I, and I love guitar players, and I love talking about guitars, and I like to see people excited about guitar. I don't care what guitar it is or, or why. It, it, if you're excited about guitar and you have found a guitar or are researching a guitar that has got you excited to play more, to practice more, to create more, I'm on your side. And, I, and that's what I try to do on this channel. I try to present a vast array of builders and makers that I use myself and would use myself on stage, not in my living room, not in the studio. I would be proud to go on stage with any of the guitars that I have featured on this channel in the past 18 months. Anyhow, this thread, <laughs> it was pretty bad. <laughs> okay, so the thread, the the forum was called J.P. Cormier and Martin Guitars, and the and the the forum is called the Unofficial Martin Owners Forum. First thing I thought was, oh man, this is wicked. I'm I'm being talked about on a on a on a Martin forum. Like this is great. But then I started reading the threads. Now, mind you, they weren't all bad. Okay, they weren't all bad. And like I said, these people are entirely allowed their opinion and I'm sure that some of them are probably pro players probably some of them probably tour have toured I don't know I don't know who they are but they seem very knowledgeable and there was people on there who were definitely fans of mine who were trying to defend me but you could tell that they were afraid to say what they really wanted to say because they would have got kicked off the forum I actually tried to join the forum I signed up for the the uh the app and I, 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 I put my, uh, you know, my name in there. And, uh, I guess as a little dig, I, my foot, my profile photo was a picture of me and Ricky Skaggs playing together on stage. And, uh, <laughs> but, um, I mean, it's all in good fun. I want to reach out to these people. I'm not mad at them at all. I, I, I'm not doing this for retribution. I'm not even doing this to justify my opinion. 
I'm just doing it because I think it's helpful. A lot of these people were uh, not only calling into question my opinion, but my integrity on the channel. And also, when they couldn't go any further with that, they started to, to shit on my music. And, uh, you know, questioning my ability as a player. And that's fine. I'm not the best guitar player in the world. Tommy Emmanuel is. Right? So, but it was unnecessary. And it was a, it was kind of mean-spirited. And I don't think, I don't think that they really want to do that. I don't think that that is healthy for anybody. And I think that the, there's a group mentality online. When people, one guy says one little derogatory thing... The next guy in the line just starts unloading. And then the next one gets worse, and, and on and on it goes. And nobody has the group sense to suck back and go, wait a minute now, hold on a second, you know. I'll give you some examples of the things that they said. The biggest one was, it's too bad, you know, that guys like this are on the internet. They're being paid to talk about the guitars they're, they're, they're talking about. That's absolutely untrue on my part. I have never been paid a dime by anybody. Now, have they given me free instruments? Absolutely. But <laughs> you could ask them yourselves. I told, and I've told everybody this, you can give me whatever you want, but I am not selling you a good review. If you send me a piece of shit, I'm going to tell people it's a piece of shit. And so you're taking a chance. I'll take the guitar. You know, I'm probably going to sell you thousands of units and I'm really getting nothing out of this because I don't, I would feel bad to sell an instrument that was given to me. So I'm stuck here with all these guitars and I don't want to sell them. It's, it's not right to sell them really, in my opinion. And I couldn't sell some of them. No way. Cause I love them, but I've told these makers, I'm not, you're not getting a good review from me if it's not, if it's not good. So just be aware if you enter into an agreement with me and you provide me with free uh, uh, anything, I'm only going to give the, the raw, unfiltered answer and opinion on what you send me. There's proof of this on my channel already w uh, uh, concerning Recording King. I believe it was a video called uh, The Law of 20%, which also got called into question on this thread. They said it's impossible. Well, it's not impossible. It isn't impossible. It's actually true, and if you check, if you go into a store and play a number of guitars built by the same builder, you will find perhaps none of them that you want to buy. So what does that tell you, right? And the reason you don't want to buy them is because they're not up to snuff in your head. If I walk in a room and play 10 Martins, two of them I might want to buy. That's a fact. I've done it all my life, and everybody I know as guitar players have done it. They don't just go in and order a D28 sight unseen. They go into a shop and play a number of Martins and make the decision based on the hands-on. I have never seen it happen that I would walk into a store and say I'd buy any one of these Martins or any one of these Taylors or any one of these Gibsons or Breedloves. It's totally subjective, but the fact of the matter is, is that all these big companies who make, like Martin makes 13,000 guitars a year, right? There's no way they're all killers. It just doesn't happen. It's not. It just can't. 2,600 of those guitars are substandard to what Martin is actually capable of doing. And we all know that. And anybody that says otherwise, that 100% of a maker's output is perfect, is, is just not listening to what I'm saying. And what I'm saying is and have been since the start, is guitar players deserve good guitars, period. And if you want one from your hero builder, like Martin, Martin's a hero of mine too, but I can't find a Martin that I can afford that I would play. And that is really, really sad because it's the same with Gibson. I can't find a Gibson I can afford that I would, I just can't. They said that I was being paid to, to say these things and that, that I, I don't, I shit on Martin and Gibbs and Taylor because they won't endorse me. That's obviously not true. If you've watched these other videos, you'll see that I, I push Epiphone all the time, especially the new inspired by Gibson models all the time, all the time. 
You think Epiphone is funding me? No. Gibson doesn't endorse me, and they never will, because I'm nobody. They don't give a shit about me. I'm some guy in Nova Scotia who likes their Epiphone-branded instruments. They are never going to talk to me. Eastman is another example, a great builder that I, I only use Eastman mandolins. I love their guitars. I would love to have one and review it. They won't talk to me, even though they're affiliated with Boucher, tightly affiliated. They get wood from him. They get whole guitars from him to sell in China. But they don't talk to me, but I talk about them continually. This is how I've got involved with all the companies that currently support the channel. I started out with just Boucher. I don't consider myself endorsed by Robin. I love Robin as a personal friend, and I happen to love his guitars. I think his guitars are the best guitars I've ever played. I have nine of them, most of which I bought them. The ones that I received, well, I've helped sell him hundreds and hundreds of units. It's a team effort. I'm not being paid by Robin to do anything. And if I was, here's the other thing. If I was being paid to do this, I would be forced to put the banner on this video that says includes paid promotion. It's a YouTube rule. It's important. It is important if I'm being paid to say something that it's, it's, cl it's clear that I am or anybody. It's part of the, of, the, of the standards and practices of YouTube. Then the next thing that they were saying was that my assertion that Martin's could, could range up into the $30,000 range if you wanted a custom guitar and that they were too expensive to buy and blah, blah, blah. They also questioned that and said I was crazy and all these other things. So I'm going to show you. I thought, okay, you don't believe me. Fine, I'll, I'm going to show you exactly what we're facing here in Canada if you want to buy your dream guitar. Because I'm telling you right now, I, I, I couldn't give the money they want for it, but I would give a fair bit of money to own a D45 or even a 41 or anything that's in the standard line that is high quality, the quality we know Martin is capable of delivering, right? So let's start there. I'm gonna show I'm gonna show you physically right now what it costs to own a Martin in Canada. Off to the races. Watch this. So now I'm gonna go to Long McQuaid. We're gonna search for a Martin. The first thing we find at Long McQuaid is just a standard D28, and there's the price on this guitar. $3,919. For a D28. Okay, now, here's the problem. It's another 15% on top of that. After our tax in this country, which is 15% HST, harmonized sales tax, they call it, there's the price of the D28 Martin. $4,500 for a bare bones guitar. I know for certain fact that D, the D28 lovers, like me, okay, I would never play a standard 28 because I know that they're too, it's too volatile. They're a factory-made instrument, whether you like to sit, hear that or not. They're factory-made with CNC machines and a, an assembly line of builders, right? That's the other thing that people don't realize. Martin's not bench-made anymore, except the custom-made instruments, are made by a small group of luthiers. Get companies like Collings, Bourgeois, Husson Dalton, Thompson, blah, 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 right? These guys build the best guitars in the world. Gallagher, those people, they have a crew of 12 to 15 people working in a shop, and you guess what their output is? Four to 600 guitars a year. So what does that mean? It means that Martin putting out 13,000 guitars a year, there's no way they're bench built. They're factory made, we, and that's just the sad story. I, I'd never play a regular 28. I'd want to get a vintage 28 or some some derivative of that. So let's take a look at that. All right, so here's a, a good one. This is a guitar that I would play and would love to have. It is the HD 28, the Herringbone 28. Well, there's your price. 4189 4189 there's your price after tax here, 
$4,817. for a standard herringbone 28. Again, that is, there's no guarantee it's going to be a cannon. I'm not just singling out Martin. It's every company that builds this at this scale. Gibson, Taylor, and Taylor's are even more expensive than Martin's now. Every Martin, every Taylor you see on the store wall in Long McQuaid, it's like three to four thousand dollars for the ba the basic bare bone thing. You know, I'll show you something to scare the living shit out of you right now. Watch this. The granddaddy of them all, in my humble opinion, one of the most beautiful guitars that has ever been designed or built by any company in the history of guitar. The D forty five, that little mama right there. That is my dream guitar to own this instrument. And look at the price of this instrument. $12,829. $12,000. There is the, t the price of that guitar after tax. $14,753. Do you have any idea how much guitar you could buy for that money? From a company like Boucher, Collings, Bourgeois, anybody, Yamaha, Yeri. If you called up Hamamatsu and said, spend $14,000 on a custom Yamaha Dreadnought for me, the guitar they sent you would burn your face right off. And so would Yeri. And so would Robin. Or anybody. Anybody. I mean, holy God, that's a lot of money. For just because I love that guitar. Uh, that guitar to me is the touchstone, the mental, emotional touchstone of, of acoustic guitars is to have a, 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 a D45 Martin. So now let's go a little further here. You're talking about custom-made guitars. I found this on, guess what, <laughs> Reverb. We don't have high technology here, and I don't care. But I'm just going to show you the quick snap of this little guy here. So that's the guitar we're talking about. And what it is, is a John Mayer D45. It's a 2018. It's three years old. Let's talk about this for a second. Now, these are the people that told me there's no such thing as a $30,000 custom Martin. Here's your ass on a platter right there, boys. There's the price of that guitar on reverb. Get a good look at that if we can. There we go. $20,000... $20,999 US dollars, okay? Watch this. 20,000 US dollars because our money is worth less here. So we have to add 20% to that. 25,198 dollars and 80 cents. And this doesn't include the duty I'll have to pay on this to get it across the border. Okay? That's another 30% duty of $7,500. It's way over 30 grand to get that guitar here. Way over. And it's nothing but a D45 with John Mayer's signature on the label inside. Come on. Come on. What the hell? How is it worth that much money? Look, we have a situation here, right? It's very simple. Martin and Gibson especially, the two oldest ones, they literally built our dreams as musicians. As a child, I watched Johnny Cash play Martins. I watched Lester Flatt play Martins. I watched, and then later on, watched Tony Rice play them, and I watched Hank Williams and Elvis. All these people, George Jones had a D45, Jimmy Martin had a D45, their contribution to our collective desire to play music is unmeasurable. It's unmeasurable how much they did for us. What I am saying to people is don't let that extreme emotional connection, like I have it myself, I would love to own that John Mayer 45. My God, that would be one of my, if I had that kind of money, 
I would buy that guitar right now. I don't give a shit what kind of shape it's in or whether it stays together or any. And we'll go into that in a second. But if you open your mind to the fact that our emotional attachment to any company is just that, it's emotional. If you shed that, you can then look at other things with an objective eye and say, okay, wow, that's a, that's a nice guitar. It's not a Martin, but it's really nice. And you play it, and it's, it is nice. And it might be nicer than the Martins in the room at the time. And you can let go of that connection to a brand and service yourself, right? Serve yourself as a guitar player. Make choices based on what makes you happy, really happy, instead of instead of potentially settling for something because everybody around you in your community, musical community or whatever says you should, right? Well, I can't show up to the Bluegrass Jam with an L56 Yamaha because it's not a Martin. That's the worst thing about this predicament for me. As I said earlier, I love you guys. I, the guys that just got through crapping all over me, I love them. They love guitar. And they love Martins, and I love Martins. But they're victims, in my opinion, of something that's not fair to any of us. And it doesn't matter whether we're talking about guitars, or in my case, making records, how you choose to run your career, how you promote yourself, all these things. There's a terrible thing in this industry about people walking around going, you can't do that. You can't do it that way. Or you're going to play bluegrass? Well, you don't have a Martin, get out of here. Or if you're gonna, are you gonna do this? Well, then if you don't do this, this, and this, you can't do that, sir. You're, you're shut out. All that does is create division among people. It shouldn't be that way. Music is a brotherhood and a sisterhood. It's a vehicle for human beings. It should never be tied to the importance of a single company. And the idea that we can't, that that some of the Martin lovers out there, and I again, I love you dearly. And I understand. I understand why you fly to their defense. But brand loyalty can be extremely damaging to someone who might get it in their head when they're surrounded by people who are infected with brand loyalty, get it in their head that they're not good enough because they don't own a guitar of a certain brand. Or they feel that they are missing something in their music because they don't have a Martin or they don't have a Gibson or they don't have a Taylor. It's very damaging. It's like you should never tell somebody that they're less than if they don't believe that the only guitar in the world is a D28 played over a microphone. Because that's just not true. It's just not true. Are they fantastic? Yes, there's some... There's been some killer Martins built. There's been killer Gibsons, killer Taylors. Every single builder has has built their Excalibur a number of times. But they're not the only game in town. That's all I want to put forward to anyone who comes at me with this brand loyalty. I understand it because I have it. And I still love you. If you have a bad opinion of me... Good. Maybe I'll learn something. I'm I'm up for criticism all day long. That's how you make better music and how you write better songs and how you tour better and how you you listen to people who don't know the whole story. A lot of these people obviously have no idea who I am, and that's not surprising. Who the hell am I? All I'm saying is let's do two things. Let's let's go forward together, right? Always. If whether it be with me or whoever the hell, get together, go together, and and don't close the door on the possibilities of of anything when it comes to music and guitar playing. Every door should be flung wide open, and if it's locked, kick the fucking thing down. That's the idea. That's the way to learn. That's the way to to build community and to build family within the within the music community. Don't shut people out. Don't make fun of, don't put things down just because of brand loyalty. That's, and you can still have your brand loyalty, 
but keep an open mind. And secondly, the second thing we have to do, and this counts for every builder, and I don't care who it is, if Robin Boucher made a shitty guitar tomorrow, I would tell him right to his face. I'd say, this thing's crap, Robin. And you know why? Because guitar builders and companies like this need to be held to their own standards. And that's my bottom line about Martin and about Gibson and Taylor and any other company. I don't care who they are. They've established an incredible history of building fantastic guitars. But when they start to put out guitars, and I'll just close with this, because it's true as well. If you want to go on my channel and look, at, look through all the comments and all the people that talk to me every day, when they start putting out guitars that I start hearing about every day from people I don't even know, saying, well, I bought a D28 and the binding's off the body already, I had to take it back. I bought a 35, I bought a vintage 28, a, a, D, a D28V, I bought, I bought this $5,000 Martin and I had to go get an action job because I can't play it. The frets are sticking out. The binding's coming off. The machine heads are loose. The bridge has lifted. That's all happened to me personally with Martins and other guitars as well. Taylors. I've had bridges off of Taylors. I've had bridges off of Martins. I've had Martins that started out great and over a period of two or three years just became unplayable. And it was just bad building. It was bad luck. It wasn't their fault. It just, it just got, it was a bad build. And... We have to hold them to account. We can still love them, but say, hey, we love you. You mean everything to us, so stop disappointing us. Don't disappoint us. If you're going to charge us thousands of dollars to, to be a part of that family that means so much to us, build us good guitars. And while you're at it, build good guitars down at the bottom of the price scale so young guys who... who learn to worship these brands can afford one right that's that's the key i would i would have all kinds of martins but i can't afford them it's just that simple i love all of you and i don't care if you don't love me <laughs> it doesn't matter as long as something i say reaches you and you have a good time playing and a good time learning and you find enjoyment and fulfillment from holding a big chunk of wood and steel in your lap. That's the bottom line. My whole life has revolved around this one instrument. It's written all my songs. If I've won awards and sold albums and all these things that people do, it's because of my love for a simple instrument and a piece of plectrum and maybe a, a thumb pick. Simple, simple tools. But they are way more profound than we're even aware as guitar players. It, they're profound, what they're able to do. And they should never separate people or get anybody angry or mad at anybody else or compel you to to go online and say unkind things about strangers, right? And I hope I'm not a stranger. I don't want to be a stranger to you. I am what I am. This, none of this is put on. This is who I am. So, and I, I hope that I'm offering something to everybody who watches this channel that will help them. So, there you go. Love my Martin lovers. Maybe someday... If I get lucky enough, uh, I will be able to buy a Martin uh, that I love, which I'm sure I could. If I could find it, I would buy it. And if I can afford it, again, and I'll review it on here. And you never know. One of the people on the, on the thread said, well, if he gets much bigger, Martin will sue him for slander. <laughs> I, I don't care. <laughs> Maybe they will. Maybe they will reach out and say, hey, uh, you know, let's send you a guitar. And I'd take it. I would. I'd take it. But I wouldn't give it a good review if it wasn't any good. i would tell you that right now. So ultimately, it just doesn't matter because, again, we're only here because we love 
the instrument. And frankly, the name on the headstock doesn't matter. It just matters that you're happy and that you're playing the best you can and practicing more than you ever have and that you get inspired to be the best guitar player you can be. As that grows, so does your fulfillment and your calmness and your peace of mind. All the beautiful, amazing things that music does for us. That's, that's it. That's why I'm here. This is Guitar Stuff with John. And love you to death. And stay tuned for more things. Because I got them coming up. All right. Peace. And we'll see you soon. And uh, hopefully they'll let me on that that forum because I want to talk to all these Martin guys. Maybe they can hook me up. <laughs>